Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. Call back I just wanted to spend a few minutes telling you about a mistake we had out on the range. I went to film this very cool video for you about shooting what I thought was going to be a smoke grenade and I ended up recording a whole dang video with no sound. So I'm going to do this quick little voiceover to explain to you kind of what is going on here in the video. A friend of mine from a neighboring agency contacted me the other day. He said, hey, I've got a couple of smoke grenades. You want to try and shoot those and see how cool they'll look? See if they'll blow up with a, with a rifle round? Who am I to say no to that kind of stuff, guys? So of course I met up with him and immediately noticed something was wrong as he handed me these two smoke grenades. See folks, smoke grenades have yellow printing on the label and these of course had blue printing. And that was the first BFC. The next thing I noticed was that it says CS gas. Blue is usually gas rounds. CS gas is like mustard gas or pepper spray in a way. It's designed to clog up your breathing and your sinuses. It's basically designed to disperse crowds that might be rioting. You see this happen a lot in places like China and Missouri. While I was filming this intro for you, I decided to pull the pin on camera and catch a couple of cool shots, you know, of pulling the pin right up in the camera. Well, on the last one, I dropped it. As soon as I pulled the pin, I dropped the dang grenade on the ground. Thinking swiftly, I realized, oh crap, this thing is now ignited. There's no picking it up. This thing was going to go off. Of course, you'll notice here that it was also going off right next to my truck and billowing inside the window. I poked my head in the back door after this thing had cleared, thinking it would be safe in there, but good lord, inside of my truck was like a gas chamber. You can see here what an expended round looks like. When the thing is ignited and works properly, it actually burns a hole in two sides of the aluminum canister. They have those little mylar tabs on there to show where the flame is going to come out. So although this thing says flameless, it is in fact not flameless. It does have a little bit of a burn to it and not something you'd want to toss out in dry grass. You can see here even a little burn mark on the asphalt and you can see the spoon laying off there to the side. So the point of having two of them was to shoot one with a rifle. I just happened to have my kel RDBC with me. This rifle is sighted in for 50 yards. So of course, what do I do? I shoot this canister low. So in true Tau Flater Mouse fashion, I set up a step stool about 10 or 15 yards away from my truck and set the gas canister on it to shoot. We had a nice secure backdrop behind a little dirt berm out behind the step stool so i thought we're good to go i'm going to slow this video down for you too because as the bullet passes through it actually makes a flash you guys who are old tau flater mouse fans have noticed that shotgun slugs when they hit things will often make a flash when they hit different metal well a 556 round as it passes through an aluminum chamber made a flash in the front and the back Shot number two, of course. Learning the lessons of the past, I put another round way too low in the canister. My rifle is sighted in for 50 yards, and so about at about 10 yards, my rifle is going to hit pretty low. So you can see the cool entrance hole, exit hole on this, tore right through that chamber. It did bust open one of the gas chambers inside. So now it's time to move on to shot number three. This time I finally adjusted and put my dot at the top of the, the little black igniter and I hit uh, dead center in the middle of the canister. Well, you can even see from this video that it kicked out a bunch of the CS powder. And as it kicked out that powder, I didn't even know if this powder was gonna be in any way effective. So we got three nice holes in here. You can see the round as it enters makes a nice little clean entrance hole and a much bigger exit hole. Looks more like a 45 exiting the back of this thing. So as I picked this canister up, I noticed all this powder sticking out and I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. And I started shaking it out a little bit. Oh boy, was that a mistake. You see, OG, the powder in this canister is actually CS powder. So as I started shaking out the powder, I ended up getting a whole face full of that stuff and staggered around like an idiot for about 15 or 20 minutes with my eyes locked shut and my nose and mouth pouring all kinds of fluids. After about 15 or 20 minutes, I was able to open my eyes again. I started the camera up and I did a couple of little voice segments that didn't come out. I had my eyes clenched shut behind the sunglasses. So folks, this just goes to show you when you get something like this that's designed to be used by professionals, leave it to the professionals, not clowns like me. Even though I've had the training to use these things, they're not designed to be played with and shot with a rifle. But uh, I think we learned something here today. First of all, don't give explosive to idiots. Second of all, a rifle round will puncture through a CS grenade and will actually activate it in a way. It's fun stuff, folks. Everyone should have some of this at a party.